So we were heading west on the interstate when about five lanes over through the morning mist, I said, Jerry, I really think I saw it. We kept hearing this chatter on the radio. People were saying there was this car driving around and there was a hand waving from the trunk. It was driving up and down the interstate and every time they get a report, the police would come back and say, well, we can't find them. And so we kept hearing that. What we need to do is we need to go out and find that car. When Garland would get a location, we would head to that location or that area, you know. It took us probably three hours or so, you know. The longer we went, the, you know, the, the, the doubt kept growing that we weren't going to find it. When I reported into Garland that we had caught up to the car, he asked, should he call the police? And I said, yes, because it was obviously not a joke. I sort of stayed back far enough that they didn't know we were following them. Mark was the pasture, and I said, Mark, steer the car while I stick my head out and take a picture of it. I clicked off about 10 exposures. It was wiggling. The hand was actually, uh, you know, wiggling there. I was excited. I, I think Jerry was trying to calm me down. I didn't think maybe they could be dangerous. I thought they were dangerous. Otherwise, why would they have this person in the car? They, something had, was not right. We were totally focused on the, on the chase, on sticking with them, on not losing them. And Garland the whole time is telling us, stick with them. By this time, I think they figured out they're being followed. They know we're following them. I told Mark then, I said, Mark, I'm fine with chasing them all over Birmingham until we find out what's going on. I said, but if they turn around and point, point a gun at us, I'm going the other way. We would follow them out of the, you know, through this residential area. If they threw it in reverse, we'd throw it in reverse. And as we're headed out of this residential area, from the distance, we see this convoy of Birmingham police cars, blue and red lights turning furiously. They kind of pen the car in. We come up from behind. They pop the trunk, and this guy would later reveal he'd been in there about 14 hours, heard them discussing where to finish him off or dump his body. He'd been stabbed, robbed, and beaten the night before, uh, but he was basically okay. That's the first thing he asked when he got out is, you know, I need a cigarette. <laughs> We headed back to the news building. We get off the elevator on the fourth floor and the newsroom erupts in applause. I went home and went to bed, you know, just to rest, get some rest. And they called me up and said, Jerry, you need to come back down here to get your picture taken. I said, why? <laughs> they said, because we're gonna run it up with this story, you know. So. These pictures went all over the world. I heard about people seeing them in Tokyo, in Rome, Italy. My folks were in Germany. They pick up the International Herald Tribune, and there's this picture of a hand sticking out of the trunk of a car with their kid's name in the caption. It was so unusual. I mean, you just don't have hands sticking out of the trunk every day. It was just really strange. Recalling my career, that's probably the, the most famous that it, as far as I'm responsible for. My 15 minutes of fame, so to speak, yeah. We couldn't get away from it. I mean, we had a responsibility, a moral responsibility, a journalistic responsibility to stay with that car. Uh, it just had to work out that way.